Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner, and Happy New Year. It is 2024, so of course we are kicking off the year with a new crafty video. Today, we're going to be having some fun using the stash. I do collect a lot of Tim Holtz bits and pieces and ephemera and all sorts of things, but every year I like to try to clean up my craft room, get organized, and discover some of those forgotten treasures so I can use them up and make room because every year Tim Holtz comes out with some wonderful new supplies that I definitely will need to make room for. If you'd like to see exactly which supplies we're going to be using here today, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. One of my biggest crafty goals for this year is to use my stash. And I have got these beautiful 12 by 12 papers from the Tim Holtz wallflower paper collection that have been in my stash for at least eight years. So it is very much time to use these. And to use these, I am going to be pulling in a folio that I purchased from Fabby Art Studio on Etsy. It was a downloadable printable and I will leave a link down in the description box. And I'm using this as a template to create my own art folio using these beautiful Tim Holtz papers. I highly recommend checking out the Fabby Art Studio. They have absolutely wonderful designs and definitely have a very vintage vibe. This is not sponsored or affiliated, but I just wanted to give a shout out to this really cool artist on Etsy. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to take three of these template pieces and I'm going to be placing them onto my 12 by 12 paper. And we're going to be taking a regular pencil and tracing around each of these. Now, when you get the art folio printable, you have to print it out on your own printer and then cut out the pieces in order to assemble. So in this case, I did the printing, I cut the pieces out using, of course, tonic snips, and now I'm going to be using them to create my own art folio. Some of the measurements are probably going to be a little bit off because my cutting wibble wobbled in a few places, but not a big deal because we can easily compensate as we work our way around the board. So we're just going to continue to trace these and put this on fast forward until we're done. Now that we have everything all nicely traced out, it's time to go in with some scissors. And of course, we're going to be using some of the Tonic Tim Holtz shears. These are going to be some long cuts, so the shears are the best tool for this job. I'm just going to follow along on those pencil lines that we made, and then we'll have all of our pieces to assemble this really cool folio. Now, the great thing about the Tim Holtz paper is that it is double-sided. On the template, it suggested doing a double-sided printing or stacking two single prints together if you're using a thinner paper. I'm using a moderately thick cardstock, so I am going to double up the exterior and interior of the folio. I probably could get away with just a single layer, but I am looking for some durability as we put this together. I'm hoping this is going to be kind of a place that maybe I could put swatches or stash tags. So we're just going to work our way all the way around the paper and cut everything out. There we go. That would be the first piece. There's the back side, and that is going to work perfectly. Let's go ahead and put the rest of this on fast forward. So 
So next, I'm going to be pulling in the 12 by 12 scoreboard. This is the score pal, and it measures down to eighths, which is perfect since I have got no idea what the measurements are going to be on these creases, and I'm going to be guessing based on my cut lines. So we're just going to put this down on here, and looking at the original piece, I'm going to try to determine where each of these crease lines is going to be before we score it. So right here, I can see that we have got three and three eighths. And I'll just make a little mark there so that I know that's one of the spaces to crease. Okay, now let's just work our way all the way down while we're right here. All right. And then we'll take a look at the next section. Okay, so there's our crease line. And let's go ahead and just give this a quick fold. I'm going to do front and then back just to make sure that's going to fold nicely. And now we're going to go in and look for that second spot to crease. And the next one is going to be coming in at seven and a half. So not, not too bad for measurements. They're a little odd since we are definitely getting down to the eighth, uh, like on the first one, but that should work out. All right, we'll just give that a good crease. And again, I'm just going to fold forwards and backwards just to make sure that all of our crease lines are ready to go. Good. So this is the first section of the folio. This is going to be the interior piece. And then we'll take a look at the exterior piece, which is right here. The exterior piece has the really, really pretty flowers on it. So again, we're going to be marking at seven and a half and three and three eighths. Yep, that looks correct. All right. Good. And then let's do frontwards and backwards for the crease line. Great. That is going to look so cool when it's finished. I can't wait to start assembling this. So now we're going to adhere our two pieces together. This section is probably going to take the longest to dry because we are going to be using some collage medium. So I wanted to glue this part up first before we start adding creases to our other pieces. I think this time I'm going to be using a combination of two adhesives. We're definitely going to be using the collage medium on the exterior but I'm kind of thinking that I want to use some score tape on the interior as well. That way things will stay together while the wet glue dries. So we're just going to run several stripes of the ATG tape down the center of the folio before we go in and add the collage medium. Okay, that looks like plenty of score tape. That should stick very nicely. Now I'm just going to take the collage medium and we're going to be running a line, well, kind of a zigzag, all the way around the perimeter of this section. And then we'll be able to put the two pieces together. So to avoid glue ooze on this, after I'm done scribbling this out, I'm going to be taking my finger and smushing that glue in. So hopefully we're not going to have any drips coming off the sides. Definitely you could use a paintbrush here, but I'm finding it's just so much quicker to go in directly with my fingers and just smush that glue out. Plus, I can get a better feel to make sure that the glue is evenly dispersed across our paper substrate. All right, turning this, working on that last side, and this should be about ready to put together. So we're just gonna take that second sheet and we're going to lay it directly on top of this. There is a very good chance that I did not cut these out perfectly, so we might get a little bit of overlap and overhang in places, but not a big deal. I can always go in with the tonic snips and trim off any overhang. So right now I'm just smoothing it out, pressing things down, making sure that glue has stuck down really nicely, and double checking that there isn't any glue ooze. So I do see a couple of little spots where I've definitely got some overhang, 
but not a big deal. We're just going to go into those tonic snips and we're just going to trim that right off and then we can let this continue to dry. In general, I think we did a pretty good job tracing, but it's really when I get down to cutting that things don't always go according to plan. But that's okay because we can always go back and add finishing details after the fact. All right. Just smoothing that down one more time, making sure there aren't any air bubbles. That is looking really good. Super happy with that. And we will just trim off this little section here. And then we're going to set this aside to dry as I start work on the other elements for this folio. Okay. So a couple more spots to trim. There we go. Ooh, I do love the detail on this paper. This is going to look so, so good once we have it all assembled. Okay. So thinking this is going to work out very nicely. Let's just give that a quick crease with the bone folder and make sure that everything is still nicely in place. I definitely want to make sure those crease lines are nice and crisp. Okay. Ooh. Definitely like how this is shaping up. Okay. Now, let's just put that off to the side. So now I'm going to kick things on fast forward as we do some more creasing. Right, so we're bringing back in our main folio section, and now it's time to start grunging this up just a little bit. Of course, we need to pull in some Distress Ink Vintage Photo, and we're going to distress the edges of the folio so that we get that wonderful vintagey look. I have one of the mini ink dabbers and some dome foam, and we're just going to work our way around all of the edges and darken these up so we get that really cool aged look. After we've worked all the way around, we are going to go in and ink up the other pieces and then come back. All right, and here is the finished inking. I love how much the vintage photo darkened this up. That is definitely looking really vintage. Now, the next part, we are going to start placing our pieces and assembling the rest of the folio. So on the front part of the folio, this is technically like what your, the cover is, we have got two pieces. In the back, when this is all folded up, we're going to have one small pocket. And then on the front, as you open the first flap, you're going to see a long pocket. So I folded down all of those tabs using the scoreboard and the bone folder. And now we're going to just add collage medium to the tabs. I'm just spreading that around my finger to make sure we've got even distribution. And then we're going to set these in place. Okay, so we're just gonna line things up and then press that down. The collage medium will need at least 20 to 30 seconds to solidify, so I'm just going to hold this in place for a bit until it's all set. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the other side with this small pocket. When you get the template from the Etsy shop, you're going to see a full color picture of how this is all assembled. And I can't recommend getting this enough. This is so fun. And once you've got the template, you can cut the pieces out and then transfer that to any of your absolute favorite scrapbooking pieces. And I'm finding this is a great way to use up those big 12 by 12s that just aren't quite scaled quite right in order to cut down for a card background. All right, so we're just gonna take that pocket and we're going to place that right on here. There we go. I'm trying to be mindful of the opening of the pocket and trying not to get any glue on there. That way I won't have anything sticking where I don't want it to stick later. So again, we're just going to hold that for a good 20, 30 seconds before we move on to the interior of the folder and start adding pockets there. After we've added all of these fun pockets and little side slips, 
we are going to also embellish this. Now, as I said before, some of my measurements weren't quite perfect. And right here, you can see that that one seam on the left doesn't line up. So we've got two choices. One, we can shorten the pocket. Or two, I can bring this back to the scoreboard and rescore the line for that first flap which is what I'm going to do because then I don't have to disturb the area that I've already glued. So just using the bone folder, we're creating a new score line and just shortening that little flap by about one eighth of an inch. So there we go. We've got that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side because we're now dealing with two layers of cardstock. And then we're just going to fold that over and again we'll add some ink and it's going to look intentional. All right. There we go. Now that pocket is perfectly aligned. So just crease that down again, applying pressure with the bone folder because again we have several layers there that we're trying to force into a smooth crease. All right. So now a little bit of ink. And now it looks like this was intentional the entire time. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Next, let's go to the inside of the folio. The outside is now complete. Pretty happy. And let's go to the inside. So on the inside, we've got even more pockets to play with. We've got some little pockets and we've got this really cool long side pocket. I'm thinking that would be perfect to stick a tag or two in. And we even have a little pocket that goes on the outside of this long flap. So this is going to look really, really neat. So this is going to be our layout. We've got two medium pockets in the center, and then we've got the tall part, and then we have a small pocket that's going to be glued on top of it. All right, let's get our collage medium, and we'll scribble that onto those little flaps and then I'll just smooth that out with my fingers before we start sticking down all the pieces. Okay. That is going to look so cool when fully assembled. All right. Smushing out that glue. There we go. And I can easily wipe my hands on a cloth that I've got over to the side when it starts to get some glue gunk. All right. So just lining that up and pressing down those little tabs and then we'll just hold it in place for a bit while it sets and then we can move on and add the next pocket all right let's go ahead and add that little mini pocket to the flap over here so more collage medium we'll get that all scribbled on all right and of course spreading that all around so the assembly part is pretty straightforward. Like once you've got the main folio scored and adjusted, all of the pieces really just fall into place. And again, I am just loving the Tim Holtz paper here. The back side and the front side, they are beautifully coordinated together. So it's really a perfect match for making one of these folios. Okay, let's hold that piece for a moment. And we're going to bring in that next pocket. All right, I am super happy I was able to trace one of the template pieces around this vintage butterfly. That is going to look really, really good. Okay, so more glue, more spreading, and more holding until all of the pieces are all together on the folio. My next favorite step in this process will be when we start embellishing all the pieces. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, one of these pockets doesn't quite match the rest. While tracing things out on the 12 by 12 pieces of paper, I had one pocket that was left over and I needed to trace it on something. So I pulled in some of the 2023 Tim Holtz Ideology backdrops and traced a piece on some paper that I thought fit the whole vibe of this folio. Now, it's not going to be nearly as noticeable because, yes, the color is definitely lighter than the paper that we have going. But since we're going to be adding in some ephemera, it's going to blend in just like it's meant to be there. All right, that would be the medium pocket. Now we're going to take that second pocket and add it. 
Okay, a little bit more glue. Quick spread. And then we'll be able to stick that down. And then move on to the decorating piece of this project. All right. So let's just stick that in place. And again, I'll have to hold both of these at least 20 to 30 seconds before these pockets are ready to stand on their own. Okay. So well, let's just hold that and then start our next step. Here we go. Everything is all nicely glued and holding together. And I am loving the constructional foundation of this folio. There's so many fun little tuck spots to put things. Now, before we get onto all the embellishment with other paper things, I decided that I wanted to add some vintage sparkle to the exterior of this folio. And we have got some of the Ranger Sparkle Paste. This stuff is absolutely beautiful. And that is going to look really lovely with the subtle gold sparkle going over the top of this vintagey paper. So I've scooped some of the medium out of the jar, and I'm just going to go for a thin layer over the fronts of the folio. I don't want a lot because if we put too much on, it has the potential to kind of get sticky. Canada does tend to run just a bit humid, so I try to be really mindful before piling on a ton of collage medium because I do want my projects to dry sometime in the next 20, 15 minutes, give or take. So we're just going to add a thin layer and not gloop this on too, too heavily. Okay, so I'm just taking my finger and spreading this around, making sure that we've got good even distribution all over this beautiful paper. And of course, we could definitely go in with a paintbrush, but in this case, I really don't want to get paintbrush streaks. So fingers it is. Okay, now the inside. But first, have to check out the sparkle. This dried for about 25 minutes, and then we ended up with this beautiful gloss finish and sparkly goodness. All right. So as I said, I want to use my stash. And I definitely stash ideology ephemera. I'm quite guilty of buying one, two, maybe even three packs at a time of my favorite ephemera pieces. So whenever I have a chance to use it, I do my best to use the stash. So here we're pulling in some different parts and pieces to add as decoration to the folio. Right now, I'm just going to kind of do a rough layout and figure out where I'd like to place all of the different pieces on here before committing and adding the collage medium to all of this. So we're just going to go through, kind of poke, rearrange, and just check things out. And figure this out as we go along. Okay. So definitely certain about where I want the, the strip to go. That's going to go right across the butterfly. And that's going to kind of act as an anchor and foundation. Now, each time I add a piece of ephemera, I am going to go back over it with collage medium just to make sure that everything is nicely sealed down and we aren't going to end up with anything peeling off the folio. So definitely going to be getting our fingers dirty with the collage medium today. So we don't need to grab an excessive amount of the collage medium, just enough to give an even coating and to make sure those edges are good and stuck. So off to the side, I've got quite the variety of pieces. We've got some long ones. We've got some short stuff. We've got some animal pictures, and I've got some flowers. All right, that sparrow is really pretty. Definitely thinking I could put that on the tall pocket on the left-hand side. Maybe even put it over the mini pocket, since we've got the flowers that are going to be going above it already. Okay. So let's go ahead, stick that down. Yep, that is fitting in really, really well with the wallflower papers. Mm. That was definitely an old set. That was the 12 by 12 wallflower papers. Absolutely loved it, but I believe that is one of the discontinued paper sets. But you know what? I've got into my stash and I'm going to enjoy using it, even if I can't replace it. 
It's more important to use what you have, have fun in the making and enjoy the piece once you're done rather than just look at the stuff that's on your shelf taking up space because as we know, new and amazing products come out every year. So it is pretty necessary to make space for new pieces. So we got to use up the old stuff. All right. And let's go ahead and add these other pieces. I've got some really pretty florals over here, and we're going to pair it with some small pieces of ephemera. There, just sticking down the back with some more glue. That looks like that's from some of the mixed media paper strips, one of those leftover bits that I tossed in the ephemera bin. Okay. Yeah, that pocket that we put in that didn't really match the others, it's definitely blending in now that we're using all of these little bits of ephemera in here to decorate. Now let's turn our attention to the front part of the folio. Here I absolutely had to bring in one of my favorite Tim Holtz and Presslet trim dies. And this is the star trim impresslet. Absolutely love this and I don't use it nearly often enough. Here I've die cut the stars using some Tim Holtz ideology craft stock. Now, when I talk about using your stash, I'm not just talking about the things that you use once for a project like ephemera. I'm also talking about remembering to pull out your favorite stamp sets, remembering to pull out different die cuts, because these are things that once you buy them, you've got them. So we might as well use them and remember to use them on as many projects as we can. So with these strips, I am doing just a teeny tiny bit of altering by smudging on some Distress Walnut Stain Crayon. And that's going to help age this and give it a more vintage vibe. Okay, so we're going to add these to the folio as well. Okay, let's see here. What are we going to do? All right, so we're going to attach them to the spine right here. And I'm just using a thin bit of collage medium because I don't want to get collage medium over the top of that beautiful metallic. But definitely want enough collage medium so that this is going to stick nicely. Now, because of the length of this folio, I am going to need a second piece to overlap that first one. Okay, so just like that, we can easily snip that. And then I'm just going to flip that over so that we don't have a crease line in the middle of our star pattern. So we're just going to use a little bit of clutch medium and then we'll stick that down and we'll overlap and hopefully that seam will be pretty much invisible if we're lucky. All right, just placing that right here. Okay, I think that's pretty much working. There's a little bit of a gap between the stars, just the way this happened to line up, but I'm satisfied with it. So now I want to do a little bit more embellishment on the cover. I've got some more ideology pieces of ephemera that we're going to pull in and start decorating with. So let's go ahead and take these pieces of ephemera and glue them down. I'm not going to be doing too much on the cover side because we already have the really pretty flowers and I don't want to cover that up. However, this section on the right definitely needs a little bit more visual interest. So there we go. That should work. Now I do want to do something on the other side and I was debating about more flowers or adding in a butterfly. Kind of leaning towards the butterfly right now because we've already got lots of beautiful flowers and it would be perfectly natural to have a butterfly kind of flitting among the flowers. Okay, and there we go. We've got this lovely blue butterfly and we're just going to add that in, and that's going to complete this section of embellishing. All right, let's add a little bit of the collage medium over the top. Okay. 
That looks pretty good. It'll definitely be more solid once everything has had a chance to dry. Because right now, I've definitely got a lot of collage medium. And that's going to take just a little extra time to complete drying. Especially in the humid environment that is lower Quebec. All right. Now, one thing that I do want to add to all this is a closure. And I have some Velcro circle pieces. I found these at the dollar store, so very easy to find and definitely a nice way to finish off a project. If you don't feel like getting fancy using clasps or strings to close up a folio, I just want something nice and simple and Velcro for me is definitely one of the easiest things to add if you want to get a closure. So I just stuck one side down while the other side is Velcroed together before peeling off the sticky back and sticking this completely down. And now everything fits together quite neatly. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this finished folio. I am so happy with the way the sparkle came out on here. That vintage sparkle is so cool and gives a great finishing touch to the folio. Over here, we've got one of the pockets. Then if we open this up, we've got a nice little side pocket to slide things into. We have our Velcro closure. And on the inside, we've got a mini pocket, a tall pocket, and two medium pockets over here. And that will be the completed folio using a template from Etsy. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner while we've created this fun folio using some of the Tim Holtz 12 by 12 wallpaper scrapbooking collection. I hope that you've enjoyed this fun video and don't forget, use your stash. You're never going to know how many goodies and treasures you have tucked away until you start digging and then you can make creative magic. So until next time, happy crafting.